very, very warm welcome this morning. This is Video News. Just a reminder that this week, on Tuesday at 6.30, we have our prayer meeting, and then on Thursday at 7 o'clock, we have our Bible study. Both of these at the moment are on Zoom. So that is Tuesday, 6.30 prayer, Thursday, 7 o'clock, Bible study. Please join us, we'd love to have you with us. We have available daily bread for June, July and August. I know that some of you read these and if you want a copy, we've got plenty, please speak to me and I'll make sure that you get one. That's daily bread available for you now. As announced last week that the church has taken another step forward to the church being fully reopened and I talked about that last week you may have seen the video that I've put on the church WhatsApp but if you haven't seen it this is the video that sums up what the next step for the church is going to be. Hello this is a video all about the next step the Mosque Eden Church are taking to reopening the building. We will be allowing people back into the church on Sunday the 6th of June. But we will still be available only via the church website. The services will still be the same. Worship, prayer, word of God, communion. But there will still be some restrictions. Face masks will still be needed. Social distancing and talking will still be we can still sit or play outside. You will need to sanitize your hands as you enter. You will also need to book a place for every Sunday that you plan to come. This is so we don't go over the allotted space that we have in the building. This can be done if you contact me personally, you can contact me, or go on the church website and go to the this has to be done before Thursday evening of every Sunday that you intend to come to the church. And let's remember, this is a step forward to reopening the church, not a fully reopening. So please, 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 if you feel uncomfortable coming back, if the restrictions are too restricted, then please, with our blessings, Stay online, thank you. Any questions, please do get in touch. Thank you. Take care, keep safe, and God bless you. As I say at the end of that video, if there's any questions or queries, please do get in touch with myself or somebody from the church section and we will answer it as best as we can. As I always say at the end of this video news, the website is available. It has everything that you need. It tells you who we are. It also has our sermons on there, the audio sermons. It has a link to our YouTube page, which has our services on there. And also there is a contact page on there. Please, if you are first time or a guest with us, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to connect with you. So please, Use the contact page to introduce yourself and say hello. We would love to hear from you. Otherwise, have a great week. Take care, keep safe, and God bless you.
to be. That's where we want to be, Lord. We want to be in your presence. We want to be in your spirit. We want to be close to you, Father God. Right at the beginning of this service, this Pentecost Sunday, Lord Father God, this day we celebrate your Holy Spirit, we stay and celebrate the birth of your church. We say we want to be in your presence, O oh Lord. We want to be nowhere else. We want nothing else to distract us but us to be in your presence, Lord Jesus. For us to be in your presence, Father God, that we can connect to you, that we can know you. That is when our strength is found, as the um, song says, that we are strong in your presence. And that's where we want to be, Lord Jesus. We want to be nowhere else and we declare it to you today that we want to be in your presence. And your presence alone, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts 2 says this. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began speaking other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing the Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? And then we jump to the end of verse 11. We hear them declare the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet John. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. This is a moment where the Holy Spirit comes. The moment we are going to celebrate today. But I want you to hear this before we just go into worship. A moment in worship. I want you to hear this. In verse 2, it says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Wherever you are sitting today, whichever house you find yourself in, know the Holy Spirit is there with you. They weren't in a church. The church was created because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to where they were. So wherever you find yourself today, know this. The Holy Spirit is ready to do a work in your life. It's ready to fill your house. And it's ready to do a great thing today. Because the Spirit reaches us wherever we find our feet. Wherever we're sitting. Wherever we're standing. These songs that we are going to sing now. They're not just worship. They are declarations 
of the Holy Spirit, their declarations and their prayers. And this is my prayer for you today, as we pray now together, that Holy Spirit, you will come and give us another upper room experience, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, will you come into our houses, wherever we sit and we find ourselves. Holy Spirit, whatever our experiences have been up until now, Lord Father God, change it because your Holy Spirit is amongst us. And I pray, Lord Father God, you will do a great work in our hearts and in our lives today. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So let's worship, let's declare, and let's pray together.
Spirit, will you break our Lord? Would you break down our lives, Father God? Come on, just spend a moment wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, whichever house you are. Here. Spend just a moment praying to the Spirit, praying in tongues, pray for His Spirit to break out, pray for Him to do a work in your lives now, wherever you are, wherever you need the Spirit, wherever you need it for, come home with Spirit. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Spirit. Do a work in our lives, Father God. Holy Jesus, do a work. God, I God. Yeah. 
Lord do you work in our lives praise you Jesus we worship you we glorify you break out spirit Heaven come down into our hearts, into our homes, into our neighbours, in lives, into our communities, into Mosborough, into Mosborough Evening Church. Father, God, come. More of you, Jesus. Recharge us, Lord. Refresh us anew. We need more of you, Jesus.
and the church gets bored. And I think we will all agree that over the last 15 months how important the church is to us. So much has happened in Jesus' time from Easter up until this Pentecost. It would have been 50 days or so. And so much has happened and so much has passed. Jesus has risen from the dead. He has interacted with the disciples. He's interacted with many people. He's ascended into heaven and disciples find themselves in a locked room, unsure what to do next, unsure what is happening, unsure about the future ahead of them. They feel scared, they feel lonely, they feel confused. Why? Because they're ordinary people. Let's be honest, we would act in the same way. We would react in the same way. Somebody they've believed in has, has gone. He's no longer there. And they're scared and they're confused and lonely. They don't know what to be doing. They don't know what the future looks like. And we've spent 15 months a little bit like that, haven't we? They're ordinary people. And they find themselves in this room. And then Jesus shares one last moment with them. One last gift. And like a fire comes from the, comes the Holy Spirit and it changes everything. It changes them. It changes those around them. It changes their actions. The church gets born. The world, the world changes by these ordinary people fired up by the Holy Spirit. They changed the world. The first sermon of Jesus, uh, about Jesus, is preached by Peter, who is moved, he tells us, by the Holy Spirit. He gets up, he raises his voice with the other 11 disciples and preaches about the one thing he knows, Jesus. And the world changes. The world changes these ordinary people. Everything changes. It's a wow moment. It's an amazing moment. And the great news, please hear me now, that same spirit is still evident today. It's still alive today. We showed you on the video we right at the beginning. It's the same God. It's the same Jesus. It's the same spirit. It's still here today. The same Jesus that we celebrate at Christmas and Easter is the same Jesus that breathed on the disciples in John 20, 21 to 22, as we've just looked at. And he explains to them that the Holy Spirit is coming and he breathes upon them. It says again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. He's illustrated as he breathes on them that the same power that Jesus has been walking in, the same power and the same spirit that Jesus has been using, he breathes upon the disciples, the same spirit. As Jesus breathes on them, the disciples who have known their Old Testament will have recognised this illustration of breathing. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed a man from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Ezekiel 37, 9, which says, Oh, we seem to be offline, we don't know if... Okay, okay, we don't know if we're still going or not to us. Okay. Just give us a moment. We don't know if you can see us or not. We just watch this it is still working. Can, can somebody, if you can see us, can somebody just WhatsApp the church and say, yes, you can still see me and hear me?
Can you see us? Hello. Holds my drill. 
my power drill. I love this drill. I bought this when I came to Mosman. My dad said to me, get this drill. It will be the answer to every DIY problem you have. And he was so right. Let me just make sure he didn't turn up. <laughs> this is a power drill. It, it, it solves every DIY problem I have. It's a powerful tool. It does a lot of things that as humans we can't do. As we try to drill into things or to screw into things and we can't do it, this drill would do it. It goes through bricks, cement, whatever. It's a brilliant, brilliant drill. But it's also a dangerous tool in the right hands, in the wrong hands. Why? Because it's so powerful. But this tool is only powerful when I take it out of the box and I turn it on. It's only powerful when I switch it on and I use it. Now the reality is, if I leave it in the box, other way now, if I leave it in the box, it's still a powerful tool. It's still a power tool. You would recognise it as a power drill. But it's not accomplishing what it's designed for if it's left in the box. It needs to be took out of the box and it needs to be used. This same spirit we have in our lives, this same Pentecost moment, this same power that is in us, it needs to be took out of the box, so to speak. We need to release it. We need it to allow it to work. We need to, 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 to put ourselves in uh, Places where the spirit can work. We need to allow it to work. We need to allow it to work through our lives. But we need to remember that power can be shown in different ways. With this drill, I've been using it around the church just this week, I'm doing a few different things, trying to get the church ready for a couple of weeks' time. And some of the jobs, you really need a power it through. You really need to hold it. Press the button and really go for it. And some bits, just a little bit. A little bit will do you. <laughs> just a little bit will do you. And it's fine. And the reality is, to stop it from being powerful, it just comes out differently. For the majority of our time, we walk in our lives and it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit dripping through. It might not be that violent wind, but that quiet whisper. That same spirit that can help us get through healing and powerful things is the same spirit that can help us in our day-to-day -day lives. As we go around, as we move around, as we meet people, as we go to work, as we go to school, as we face those things that worry us and concern us, it's the same spirit, it's the same power that can help us through those things as well as hoping, helping us through those bigger times as well. We just need to allow it to happen. We need to allow it out of the box. We need to give it a chance to work. See, the disciples in the book of John, as we see, after Jesus died, they went fishing. They tried to get through the day in their own strength. They caught nothing until Jesus turned up. And then the spirit comes upon them and they become world beaters. They become world changers. They set up the church. And the difference is they've gone from fishermen to world beaters. Peter's gone from denier to defender of Jesus. And the difference is they've allowed the spirit to work in their lives. Pastor Phil Hills once said at an evening conference, and I'm paraphrasing this slightly, don't pray for more spirit, let's pray that we use what we have. Don't pray for more spirit, pray that we will use what we already have. Because what we already have is enough. The last illustration for my power tool, do you know, it's battery ran. Sometimes the battery runs flat. And it starts to slow down. You can tell it's going to happen. It doesn't become as powerful. It doesn't become as effective as a power tool. And it just starts to go. 
and sort of just finishes and just ends. And what happens is quite simple, simple. You put it in the battery pack and you plug it in and it recharges. I don't go for something new, I don't go, well, the drill's no good enough not any longer and chuck it out. I don't go and buy a new battery, I just recharge it. You may be feeling flat today. You may be feeling discouraged. You may feel like you are working on empty. The spirit is still there. It's not gone away. We've not chopped it away. You just need to plug it in again. You just need to recharge it. Read that Bible. Pray those prayers. Spend that time in silence. Spend that time in his presence. Spend that time worshipping him. We're going to have a moment uh, in a few minutes where you will have that opportunity to recharge yourself and to refresh yourself because it's the same spirit and it's the same power and you can be recharged by it today. So if it's the same spirit and it's the same power, then it's also the same job. You say, yes, the spirit is there for us. It's there to help us, it's there to guide, it's there to direct, it's there to pray, it's there to heal. But it's also there to help us share the good news. To share the gospel, to fulfil the great commission. John 20, 22 says, and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now please hear me clearly. This does not mean we can forgive sins. Only God can do that. It's not us that does it. But we are his mouthpiece. And if we choose not to tell someone, we're choosing for them not to be forgiven because we, how can they be forgiven if we're not telling them about the good news? If we choose to tell someone, then he gives that opportunity for that person and the Holy Spirit to work together. We've got a job to do. And we might then say, but I'm not qualified. It's all right for you, Pastor. Surely you learned that bit of Bible college. Surely you learn how to do it. It's okay for you. Do you know, evangelism scares the life out of me half the time. I think it's a scary, scary thing. You know, it's for everybody. We may not be qualified. We may not know what to say. We may not even know what to do. But listen to this. John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this was Jesus talking, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. It will teach you all things. All things, which includes being able to talk to your neighbour, being able to talk to your friends, being able to talk to your family member or your loved one about the good news. But look at this, Acts 2 verse 14 onwards, we've already talked about it, touched about it. Peter gets up and preaches the good news. He preaches about Jesus. Where did that come from? He was moments ago in a locked room with the other disciples. They wasn't sitting around saying, let's prepare a sermon. They weren't sitting around going, let's spend, um, put a good service together. He was moved by the Spirit. He got up and he spoke possibly one of the best preachers. Obviously, Jesus' preachers are the best, but one of the best preachers ever spoken. Thousands and thousands came to know Jesus. Why? Because he just moved in the spirit. He got it out of the box. He allowed it to move. He allowed it to move through his life. You see, we are never asked to do something, or God never expects us to do something on our own. We're not expected to do it in our own strength. Acts 1 4. Jesus says to his disciples this. Let's listen to this carefully. Acts 1 4. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. So Jesus tells the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Spirit. 
And then in Acts 1 8, it says, For you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, this gift he was talking about, comes on you, uh, comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem. The very place they didn't want him to go to at first. And in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus did not expect the disciples to go to Jerusalem on their own. He wanted them to go to Jerusalem and witness with the Holy Spirit. God does not expect us to evangelise or share the good news on on our own. That's why he's giving you the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit, the same power, gives us the same job to share. He says to the disciples, wait, wait for the Spirit. Now it's upon you, now go and witness. It's important that. The Holy Spirit came on that Pentecost Sunday. It came with power. It came with peace. It came as a gift to us. That same Spirit, that same power, and that same commission still exists today. In fact, the world needs him more than ever. But we do have to let it out of the box. We do need to use it and we need to allow it to work for us each day. I'm going to play a song in a moment that's from Ely Sound's new album. And the song is called The Upper Room. That's the room the disciples found in it. And I want us to listen to it. And I want you to spend time recharging yourselves. Because I believed as I was writing this, I felt very late that there are some of you here, it's been a long 15 months, and you need to be charging. You need to plug it back in. You need to recharge and allow that spirit to fill you again, to refresh you and to renew you again. This psalm talks about us having another upper room experience. And that is my prayer to you today. As you watch this, you maybe you will close your eyes and just let the Spirit overtake you. You may just spend a moment in His presence. But whatever you do, take the Spirit out of the box. Let that same Spirit and that same power and that same commission refresh you and we charge you today.
are still the same. You are the same spirit. You are the same power. You give the same commission, Lord Jesus. Our oh, Holy Spirit move amongst us, Lord. Holy Spirit move amongst us. Speak to us. Do a work in our lives, Lord Jesus. Heal us, Lord. Heal us where we are. Do a miracle in our lives. Break those chains. Take those sins away. Forgive us. Help us. Guide us. Give us the strength from day to day, Lord. Help us, Lord, to walk in the same spirit, to walk in the same power, and to go with the same commission in our hearts, Father God, as those opportunities come. We will not cast them aside and say to someone else, but we will speak in the power and the spirit that you have in us. Help us to take you out of the box, Lord. Help us not to pack you away. But help us to move in your spirit. Thank you for it. Help us, Lord, we pray. In your precious name. In your precious name. We're just going to close in uh, a song, but as we do, if the Spirit's doing a work in your life, just continue to let it work. Just let the words flow over you. Just let, don't break this moment. Maybe God's speaking to you and if you're comfortable to share it, share it on the WhatsApp. Just let the Spirit just move and continue to move as we go into our last song.
We thank you for that same spirit, that same power, and that same commission. We thank you, Lord, for whatever you are doing. <laughs> Through that last song, I was thinking, I don't want this service to end. I'm having such a great time in your presence, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for that. But I thank you, Lord, that the service ends, but your presence doesn't. The service ends, but your presence doesn't. The service ends, but your spirit doesn't. It's the same spirit. It's the same power. It's the same commission you've breathed in upon us. And it lives in us. And we thank you, Father God, that you are indeed faithful. And you are indeed gracious. And you are indeed good. Help us this week, Lord, we pray. That we will live in that same spirit, we will live in that same power, and we will live with that same commission heart, Lord, we pray. Your precious, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. God is so good. I hope and pray you've been blessed today. Don't forget this week, it doesn't end here. We've got prayer meetings, 6.30 on Tuesday. We've got Bible study at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Both of them via Zoom. You've got the WhatsApp, keep encouraging. If God's really blessed you with something, please share it with us. Don't forget, we're taking the next steps of the church reopening from the 6th of June, two weeks time. If you want a place, in church on the 6th of June, you need to let us know, please. And uh, next week, it will look, online will be the same, it will only be online, it will look a little different because we will be experimenting with the new setup for when the church comes back. So uh, just bear with us next week. Thank you for sticking with us when the the camera had gone down. Thank you for helping us to know they hadn't, or kind of had, or hadn't, or whichever way. I hope and pray you've been blessed. Keep walking in the same spirit, the same power, and with the same commission. Take care, keep safe, and God bless you.